Like almost everything in this house, we ordered these doors through Garrison's Building Supply. And I'm telling you that selecting and ordering doors is way easier said than done. There are an unbelievable number of choices to be made when selecting a door. The size of the door, what it's made of, the profile and look of the various panels, the glass, the hinges, the swing or the handing of the door, the bore for the lock sets, the threshold, the layout and makeup of the side lights, the jam thickness and width, it is really amazing. But for us, most of the exterior design decisions have been made by now. So selecting a door was simply a matter of finding the door that matched what we already had going on, getting the technical details right, and making sure they were communicated correctly through the ordering process. In this case, the side lights on the door had to go in first because the siding was going on. And so they had to be put in so the siders could work their way around this opening. That meant that the reveals, the distance from the inside of the side light to the edge of the door had to be exactly the same on both sides. It also meant that the outside of the transom window had to be exactly in line with the outside of the side lights. So location was very specific. If your front door does not have side lights, it's easier, there are fewer things to worry about, and you can start right in on the door itself. So the first step in installing the door is to verify the size and that your opening is plumb. If your opening's not plumb, you need more room to install it. If your opening is plumb, you can live with less room. So this opening is nice and plumb, and so I could reduce the net opening by one inch. I've got about a half an inch of oversize between the rough opening right here and the actual size of the door. That's gonna be plenty because what I have to make sure happens is that I have the same distance from the side light to the door on both sides of the opening. The other thing you check before you wrestle the door into position is that you have enough height. In this case, I've got plenty of height. Six foot ten and a half is sort of a good target size on the rough opening on most, you know, western United States, six ten and a half is generally enough room. It gives you enough room to get the door in. The case will cover anything that happens. In this instance, the case is going on the outside, the trim is going to be a big wide piece that will cover the whole world. Same thing on the inside, so a little extra distance in the vertical opening is not going to make a particle of difference. But in this case, we're having to blend with the side lights again. I have to make sure that the top of the door is at exactly the same height as the top of the window. So let's get this door out of the house and install it. So there's two things that have to happen before we set the door into the opening. I have to caulk underneath the threshold. I'm using 100% silicone. Now note to self, never let 100% silicone get all over the place because it makes painting impossible. Paint won't stick to it, it makes a terrible mess. That's item one. Item two is you have to be sure to take any packing off the door. They are screwed together and bolted together and there's cleats on the bottom and there's just sort of packing protective innovations that usually are plastered all over doors you got to make sure they're off of there before you get your door in and find out whoops wasn't ready this is this little piece of galvanized steel is reinforcing the deadbolt area of the door so that stays on but this is a really cool innovation it used to be that there would be a couple of duplex nails driven through the jam to keep the door from swinging open when it was shipped 
But now you've got that plastic threaded bolt that goes in there. And then once the door's in place, the she bolt side of that can be pulled out. But in the meantime, it'll hold the door fixed. Let the top come clear out, lean on our out hand. Set it up high so that it kind of comes straight down onto the caulking. Ooh. Sort of. Boy, that's a tight height. <laughs> there we go. Good. Whew, made it snug. Let's us in. The hinge side is the control side of this whole process and will get the most attention first. I put a pair of nails well below each hinge because the final um, attachment, the attachment once everything is perfect will happen at the level of the hinge. So I'm going to put two nails below this top hinge to hold the door where it's at now with the understanding that once the shims are in place I can adjust it and it will move on those two nails that I'm going to put in. Bam! Bam! Going to do the same thing just below the bottom hinge. Bam! Bam! Now the door is in place, but not necessarily the right place. But it's not far off. At this point, everything can be adjusted. The hinge side can be worked up a little. This side can be worked up. It needs to come up just a little bit. Our reveal is getting close. So this is too wide. This is too narrow. I'm going to run two shims in here to rack the door over towards the strike side, which is going to simultaneously make this reveal better. The reveal in this case is the distance between the door and the jam. It will rotate the door da down getting a nice even reveal, hopefully the same thickness as that, about the thickness of a nickel. Rotate that down. Hopefully without, yep, we'll be able to shim this over to make sure that that's all right and bring this down to the desired distance at the same time that this becomes a desired distance. Everybody cross your fingers. In case I'm losing you with this, it's because it's hard to describe, but the outcome that we're looking for is several reveals being perfect or close to it. First, the distance between the jam and the door on three sides should all be even. Now the reveal can be tighter on the hinge side than it is on the strike side, but it should be the same width from the top to the bottom, from the right to the left, and from the top to the bottom. At the same time, I need to get these reveals from here to here, both at top and bottom, and from here to here, both at top and bottom, the same. At the same time, I need to get this plumb in this direction and a half an inch to the inside of the jam from the rough framing, so that it, actually 9 16 so that it matches the drywall when the drywall's in place. So I'm just going to start working this back and forth, getting those reveals right, checking occasionally with the level, but not too often. There is another way to do this, and you will do this if your house is not plumb. And that is, you will start by plumbing the jam first, the jam side straight up and down in both directions, and attach it. Then put the door in and make the other two jams conform to the door that's hung off of a plumb jam, because you can't trust the framing. But we don't have to worry about that. We are just going to float the door in an opening that'll leave a nice even margin everywhere you look. So I'm using the word reveal a lot and it's interchangeable for two or three different situations. For instance, this reveal is the distance between the door and the jam. This reveal is the distance between these two jams. This reveal is an example of the distance from the edge of the molding to the edge of the jam and from the edge of the molding to the inside edge of the window. So reveals are visually parallel lines, whether it's lines in a space or lines on two sides of a molding, um, parallel lines are referred to as a reveal.
This is an adjustable threshold, so I'll be able to compensate for this if it's creating an air leak, but it's not. So I know that watching a video, everything just looks so easy. I mean, there's never a misstep and it's just smooth and it only takes four minutes and 37 seconds. And so who can't do that, right? But this actually is kind of easy because I knew when I walked up to it that this wall was plumb, that the opening was square. And so the door was going to drop right in. You may not have that advantage. If this is a retrofit, if you're replacing a front door in an existing house, you have no idea what you're going to confront. So that's why the first thing you do when the old door comes out is see what you're up against with the opening. Work from the hinge side. Put the hinge side in as plumb as you can. Now it may be that the hinge side of your rough opening is so far out of plumb that you have to kind of split the difference or, or the trim process will be just such a challenge. But the goal is that the hinge side of your door is perfectly plumb in both directions or as close as you can make that happen. So something to think about when you're hanging a door is that you're building a small and simple machine. It operates. It's going to operate for, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of cycles. And a problem in the hanging of the door is going to make every one of those cycles a frustration for somebody. And nothing is as obvious a mistake as a door, a door where the hinge side is not plumb because then it will swing of its own volition. If it's leaning in, the door will swing in. If it's leaning out, the door will swing out. You don't want that. The other thing is whether this hinge side is plumb or not, the jam side has to be exactly the same or your weather stop will not keep the air out. If your two, the two sides of your door opening are not in the same plane, the bugs and the breezes and the dust and everything that's on the outside is going to find its way through the inside because the door will not seal up against the weather strip. We're getting down to the final, the final moves here, and I'm going to keep fussing and chasing the reveal around, slipping in more shims and more shims until I know it's exactly where it goes. Then I'll lock the shims in with nails, in a couple cases with screws, and this thing will be installed. Well, we're just glad to see you. So this door is about 95% where I want it. The reveals between the two side lights are just really good. The top reveal is really good. The reveal down the strike is pretty darn good. The reveal over here on the hinge side, you're always sort of hostage to the reveal that's created by the mortise on the hinges, by the space between the leaves on the hinges and how far it's mortared in, mortised into the jam and into the door kind of locks you into what it's going to be at the hinge and then you have to be ready to kind of live with that in between the hinges. So we're going to tweak that just a little but it is so close. The next thing I'm going to do before I lock all of the shims into place is pull these hinges, the jam at the hinges back really hard with three GRK screws. If you pull the weather stripping, you can pull it clear out but you don't have to. You can just fold the weather stripping back and start that screw in a spot where the weather stripping is going to cover it and it's not going to tear the weather stripping, which is something you got to watch out for.
So the door is about 98% hung. It's where it belongs, a couple tweaks in the reveals, um, and then I'll lock all the shims in place, add a couple more shims, lock them in with a nail gun. I will run some big aggressive screws in when I put the door lock set in to provide you know, some more strength at the, at the deadbolt and at the strike. But for now, I'm going to pull the brick mold off, don't need it because we'll trim it out with this five quarter by six. It helped me a lot to have it on there so I knew that I was in a plane. So we'll pull that off, throw in the last of the shims, fasten them down and be done. Remember that any nails you put through the door jam holding in things in place at the beginning of the process are going to have to be puttied and painted, so don't get too carried away with your nail gun. Also keep in mind that the shims are a vital part of the installation. So when I say lock them in, I'm saying make sure your final nails are shot through the shim package, holding them in place as well. This door system, the door, the side lights, the transom window, all came from Alliance Door. Alliance Door handles and sells doors all over the country, and they have a wide, wide assortment. There, um, the fellow at Alliance Door that we were talking to, Joseph Emmons, made us a good deal on this door, but it still costs money. Pre-hung doors do cost money, but they don't cost as much as it costs to hang them yourself. So unless you are just in love with the idea of hanging a door from scratch, forget it. Buy a pre-hung door, do yourself a favor, you'll get a better job. Now this door went in really easily, or fairly easily. I've got a few too many nail holes on this side, but we'll have a good painter. So if you're going to have to hang a door or two or eight or ten, do yourself a favor and try to start with an interior door if possible. They're lighter, they're not as sort of top heavy when you put them in the opening. They don't have a threshold that you have to mess with and they're just a little more forgiving. This is the first real cut and dried cost that we've come across in a while that I can actually share with you. And that feels pretty good. This door assembly cost $1,672. Now I think Alliance Door cut us a little discount, but I don't think it was over a hundred bucks. So I think that you're looking at about $1,700 with two you know, side lights and a transom and the door and pretty nice. It's a fiberglass door. Thermatrue is the brand name that you'll recognize it under when you get to your lumber yard, probably. And it's good. It was, these little side lights were custom made. That transom was custom made for this opening. The door was a standard size on a six and nine sixteenths jam, which is standard if you order it that way. And so that was the number on that. So new construction, if you've got a man, it'd take a carpenter about probably three hours to put this in, probably. I mean, you know, by the time he gets there and does it, and he's got, a, you know, probably three or four hours if he's on your payroll. But if you're hiring a contractor to come put an entry door system like this in your existing house, he's going to come and help you figure out what you want to order. He's going to babysit that through the, the lumber yard. He may have to pick it up and deliver it. He's got to demo the old door, put in the new door. There's going to be some, maybe some drywall repair on the inside. Maybe it's new case and base, and maybe he paints it. And so if the door costs you $1,700, the installation is going to cost you three thousand. I mean, maybe not. Depends on where you are. You might get the whole thing taken care of for, you know, let's just say it doubles the door, and you're in there at thirty-four hundred bucks. Maybe. I wouldn't be crazy on taking that job in a remodel situation, because who knows what you're going to have to do on the flooring, where the new threshold 
with interfaces with the existing tile or the existing hardwood floor, and so these things can grow. But a new construction, 1700 to buy it, and you know, 100, say 200 bucks to put it in with the man who's already on your payroll. It's one of those cases where the labor does not equal the material, and those things don't come along all the time. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman, and keep up the good work. Mm -hmm.